Hi guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Marketing Meatball Mafia. I'm Christina Sarge. And I'm Allison Micheletti. And today we are very happy and very honored to have a very special guest with us here today. But before I introduce him, I do want to take a little note and say uh, a little bit of a teaser about what we're going to be talking about today. Dentistry can be a lonely profession. Um, very rewarding, very rewarding, a lot of skill involved here, but it can certainly feel lonely. Um, I know that the dentists that we work with find themselves maybe comparing their work to others, uh, feeling that they're just not worthy or not good enough. Uh, and the mental health aspect of dentistry is something really important and something that we should talk about. So today we are very happy to welcome Dr. Alan Stern to the Meatball Podcast today. He is a practice coach, a certified health coach, and can offer us some nice little perspective on how we can work on changing our mindsets for a more successful and more um, profitable and stronger future. And if you watch all the way through, you might just get Alan to say the F word. <laughs> conversation was really the, the first time we ever met and it yeah. was just kind of serendipitous almost like we found this weird connection and uh you told me a little bit about what what you do and it's something that's near and dear to my heart and I feel that it's something we should absolutely be spreading not only to the dental community but really worldwide this is such yeah. an important message so yeah. would you I'll just take a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit of it about what you do and how you found this passion. So I've been practicing since 1981. I graduated dental school in 1981. No old man jokes out of you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And I was conditioned. I was conditioned from even from my childhood, but let's just look at dental school for a moment. You're conditioned that if your work is not perfect, it's garbage. Mm -hmm. And if your work is garbage, your value is not particularly good as a human being. That is the implicit message that many of us still get from our education. And, and I got out into the world and I started seeing all the flaws in my work. And then I started looking at all of the beautiful work that my colleagues are doing, my mentors are doing, and their beautiful homes, their beautiful cars, their beautiful this and that. And I'm starting to think of myself as really one of these little puny guys who's never going to amount to anything. Does that sound familiar? It happens 100%. a lot. And I have a wonderful life. I've always had a wonderful life, but I couldn't grasp the concept because of my flaws and imperfections. So what did I do? I bought a big house, <laughs> bought a big car, spent a lot of money on radio advertising. Boy, did I sound like a celebrity, let me tell you. And... It was pretty cool until the bills started piling up. Mm -hmm. And when you're living paycheck to paycheck in your 50s, something is a little bit wrong. And I started to live in reality. And my reality was that I was living a little over my head and it added up. Mm -hmm. Sold my house. And when I sold my house, I literally cried. I couldn't provide my wife, my wonderful wife, and my wonderful kids with what I thought I had to provide in order to make a great life. But I made mistakes and I paid for them. Once I downsized my life and I got money out of the way, life opened up and my eyes opened up to the reality that this is a wonderful profession. We just have to dream big and I'm still dreaming big but I'm living in reality. So once I accomplished that, I knew that my everyday work was wonderful. I'm doing things right. My patients love me. My team and I were cohesive. We do great stuff together and life is good. So I think the thing that I learned as a dentist 
I don't care if you're a Panky scholar who are the, the most awesome denizen pe people in the world, if you're a charity caregiver, if you're a DSO provider or owner or whatever, you have the opportunity to make somebody's life better every single moment you're in that office. And if you do kind of like I do, and please don't be like me, take your own, be your own variant of yourself. Mm -hmm. Whose life are you going to make better today? Who are you going to make smile today? The dumbest little class two composite that you do, that I do, affects somebody's life 24 seven. Mm -hmm. The all on four prosthesis that I'm gonna do right after I get done with you mm -hmm. this afternoon, is going to change somebody's life. And you know what? I guarantee you, Dr. Perfectionist, the occlusion is going to be a little off. <laughs> and I guarantee you, the patient is going to call me sore. And I guarantee you, I'm going to have to make changes from the provisional that I'm going to do, which is going to be pretty darn good, to the final one we're going to put in. Does that make my work garbage? I will change somebody's life this afternoon with the help of my surgeon, my anesthesiologist, and my lab technician. I think you touched on two, two really things that are um, ways that, that I live my life or I catch myself thinking of, and I'm not a dentist, uh, but I, do, I work with plenty mm -hmm. of them. But one sure. that you touched on is kind of looking over the fence, comparing yourself to others, a little yeah. bit of that imposter syndrome, just feeling like mm -hmm. you are you are not good enough if you you do one thing wrong or the inclusion's off on on the restoration yeah. that you are a failure. And mm -hmm. I think this is a mindset that um, kind of has infiltrated a lot of sure. of people and a lot of professions, de dentistry especially. Um, yeah. But being able to do what you did to find your find your why and understand that you are making a difference in these people's lives. You are transforming these people, these people's lives. And that is why you do what you do. How did you find that? Why? Like, how did you grow out of, of maybe the, the looking over the fence and the, the imposter type of, of mindset? You, you hit on the big point. The big point is the comparison thing. Comparison is poison. It is absolute poison because I could never be you. I could never do what you're doing. And I cannot do what my great mentors do in the greatest ways. I can only do it like I do it. So we all have our strengths and weaknesses and our drives. You have to sit down to find your why. You have to sit down and figure out what makes you happy. And I know what makes me happy. I live for the hug. I live for the one-to-one -one moments with my patients. And if that one-to-one -one moment, docs, is only a DO composite on tooth number 12, so be it. I use that time to extend my love to another human being in my own special way. My why is the love of another human being. And I use my dentistry to express it. And if that gets me 18 roundhouse bridges or 18 all on fours in a week, and it doesn't. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's fine. If it gets me X number of procedures that pays my bills and a little bit more, that's fine. And I've now learned to patiently grow myself in areas where I would like to grow. That makes, that's fun. Let me, let me tell you a dirty little secret. Don't tell anybody this. Our little but secret. I'm, yeah, don't tell anybody, especially the dentist listening out there. Don't let them know. I'm not very good at root canals. <laughs> no matter how many courses I take, I don't do them well. What's the point in beating my head against the wall if I try it and I just don't do it to my or my patient's satisfaction? Yeah. God created the specialist to bail people like me out <laughs> or to make people like me look good. Right. I don't care. 
I found something I don't like to do, so I don't do it. I don't like running room to room to room. Now, there are clients that I coach who live to run room to room to room that turns them on. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. I'm not them and they're not me. Yep. So my why, what makes me happy? The love of another human being. Mm -hmm. The knowledge that I've made somebody's life better, not, not just technically, but personally. That's what my little practice is all about. And that's what's making me very prosperous mm -hmm. in my, by my own unique standards. So find your why. Identify the things that make you happy. Identify, here's, here's a trick for, for our listeners. Go through a timeline of your life from adolescence to now. Well, I'm still living adolescence. So. <laughs> Immaturity works really well for me. That's also another trick. But if you could identify the highlights of your life, and then if you could tie those highlights into a commonality, what about every happy moment in your life? What do all those happy moments have in common? Then the real trick is to tie your daily practice into it. Right. Then, then you can build the practice. Then you can create a vision and a mission. Then you could walk in and, and um, oh, let's take a chance here. Monday morning won't suck. <laughs> <laughs> can I use that on a podcast? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, Monday morning is fine. So find what turns you on. Um, for some people, I, I don't know, for some people, it's artistic expression. For some people, it, it's getting that stuff put up on AACD and really <laughs> shining. Uh, there are a million different motivators in dentistry. Find your positive. That's, that's the big thing. And do not compare yourself to anybody else. Compare yourself to yourself yesterday. Right. That's so important. And that's real easy to say. It's very, very hard to practice. Much harder Absolutely. To, to, to actually Absolutely. execute. And I know that that yeah. um, learning not to compare yourselves to others is a learned skill. It's something that we all have to work on. I know I'm guilty of it myself, sometimes getting caught up looking at where the grass I feel might be greener. But mm -hmm. I've personally learned or just, you know, the way I was raised. And my mom always said, the grass is greener where you water it. So stop looking over the fence. Yeah. And yeah. I know that you have an F word that you is not your favorite. And I live in New Jersey. You're playing with fire. Here. <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about that one on the podcast. Oh, but we can. Our yeah. editor will have a boatload of fun yeah. with like some grouping and graphics. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll take you a step further. It's an MF word. Oh, right. My failure. <laughs> failure is a terrible word. There is no such thing. And unfortunately, we're being poisoned by a culture that's now focusing on other people's failures rather than areas in which we can improve. And sadly, we turn on the news and we see people pointing fingers at each other's failures. In dentistry, we've had fingers pointed at ourselves for our failures. No, no. It's areas where we can get better. I think that's the important note. It's the important. No matter how, no matter where the imperfection is in your work, no matter where you can see that you can do it better, that thing that you placed in somebody's mouth has done a lot of good and it's made them better than they were before they saw you. Right. That's the point you got to realize. Failure, no imperfect yes and you'll always be imperfect but you'll be better tomorrow than you are today so yeah water your grass right, right. Make yourself better. lifelong learning keeps you young and it makes you realize that you're never going to be perfect you just be a little bit better and that's good yeah and that's that's good yeah. there's coming back to, to to the f word or the the, the mf word here I think that that is also an, an adapted mindset. I'm curious to see if you if you agree. Is you can choose to harp on this 
one thing that you didn't do right, whatever, whatever it may have been, or that didn't go perfectly. And you can harp on that and Mm -hmm. really degrade yourself. Or you could look at that and say, okay, what can I learn from what I did? Let's do better next time. Let's Mm -hmm. constantly improve just little improvements over time. And that's really all we can expect of ourselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? We do both. And I want doctors, docs, I want you to allow yourself to do both Mm -hmm. because you're not, if we are wired in a certain way, and I was wired that way from childhood and many of our listeners have the same or similar baggage. So we will always have the instinct to say, oh man, I'm, I didn't do this like Frank Spear did mm-hmm. or Jeff Rouse or John Coyce. Oh my God. And there will be that knee jerk when, I, I don't know, am I the only one who had a patient leave my office because they weren't happy with me? I, maybe I'm the only one. And Ever. then I, I want to, I want, yeah. And, and the first instinct is to wonder what's wrong with that damn patient or what's wrong with me? What did I do? Uh, Oh oh my God. I got to call them. I got to find out why they left. I got to find out what did I do wrong? Oh my God. They're going to, they're going to sue me. They're going to call the board. They're going to do Take a deep breath because you're going to have an instinct to do that. And that hard wiring is going to be there and we have to acknowledge that it's there. We have to tap our inner coach, our inner mature self or our inner reality testing our mindfulness. And by the way, that's my next frontier. That's what I'm studying right now. But we have to understand that it's there. And we have to just step back, take a deep breath and say, okay, life's not perfect. I didn't manage this as perfectly as I would like, but I'm okay because the work is okay. And Mr. McNasty just left my office in a tizzy or called up my front desk and say, he's never paying me ever. But Mrs. McNice is coming in now. And she just gave me a hug. And she just thanked me for that beautiful denture I placed that enables her to smile each and every day. So we tend to focus and overemphasize the one negative. Mm -hmm. And we underestimate the thousand positives that are in there with it all. So we have to be gentle on ourselves. We have to allow ourselves that wiring, acknowledge that it it exists, let it pass, and take a deep breath and say, life is still pretty darn good. Absolutely. I think this is something you you help um, the practices realize. Don't you have your um, Alan's fast tips or or very simple simple things? things? Yes, very simple (laughs) things. That's right. That's uh. That's going to be coming out uh, in book form uh, sometime in the future. But yeah, really simple little things you can do. Um, I use, uh, we were talking before the podcast, I use laughter in my office. Laughter is a tool that I can use. Now, some docs may not be able to do that. Um, Some people just aren't as funny as I am. (laughs) Get over it. (laughs) But everybody's got kindness in their hearts somewhere. Smile and extend kindness. Start with yourself. Have a relationship with yourself and understand that you are a worthy human being, worthy of love, worthy of respect, worthy of earning a living, worthy of drawing patients into your office, worthy of the respect of your team. Respect yourself and like yourself first. Extend that liking team. Bring them into your world to whatever degree you think is appropriate. Right. And have them all radiate radiate that kindness. It's so simple to be nice. I was driving to, to a meeting this morning. Uh, at 6.30 in the morning, I'm on my way to a meeting. And there's a guy i would never seen before. I've seen him walking around, but he doesn't know me. He's walking this big, beautiful, 150-pound dog, gorgeous, pure white dog. And I'm at a red light. I rolled down my window and I said, I said to him, I've seen you walking that dog. That is the most beautiful dog I've ever seen. 
And he looked, he was, he was astonished uh, that some random guy rolls down a window, but he smiled and we started chatting together until the light turned green. I rolled up the window. I extended some kindness to a total stranger. Why not in your office extend kindness first? Get to know the people you're serving. You'll be a better doctor and you'll be a happier doctor. It's so simple. Right, so simple. If you can't set them up in a in a in a preclinical preclinical interview room like I have behind me, sit them down in the chair, just take a time out and say, tell me about yourself a little bit, Miss New Patient. And they start opening up and it's such a joy getting to know them. Very simple thing number two, exercise. Take care of your body. Uh, my good friend uh, Uchi Odiatu taught me your body, your muscles have no idea how old your body is. Point. And when yeah. you exercise, yeah, when you exercise and keep yourself in shape, you think better. When you eat right, you think better. Your head's more clear. When you get yourself in shape and look in a mirror and say, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> you're, you're psyched for, for a good day. Sleep. Get seven hours of sleep, will you please? The days of the days of pulling all nighters are over. Right. Refresh, refresh your brain, refresh your body. It's funny you say that because I was recently at a dental uh, conference and I was out to dinner with some of the other attendees that were there, and it was almost like we were they were having this competition over dinner about who was able to function with the least amount of sleep. <laughs> And like some people were only getting three, four hours of sleep a night. And I said to them, I I don't know how you do it because I would be dead. And I... You definitely don't want to see me on three to four hours of sleep. I No. Completely unpleasant. It would not be good. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be my dental patient. But right. My, no. Three or four hours. No. Um, you, have, you must refresh your brain and your body every day and diet exercise sleep maintain a social connection um uh, younger next year by crowley and lodge a game changer how to be vital vibrant and get this girl sexy <laughs> into your age and beyond. Yeah, but, hey. Hey. Uh, but we need a couple <laughs> more push-ups before we do that <laughs> yeah, uh, give me plenty but if you if you develop a good regimen of diet, exercise, social connectedness, and hang out with like-minded dentists, one of the biggest one of the biggest things responsible for my transformation is me getting to know some of the most phenomenal dentists in, in the country, and just talking with them and listening to them, listening to dentists who have the same orientation to dentistry and people as I do. And my way, and I can't overemphasize my approach to dentistry and my friend's approach to dentistry is not universal. You have your own approach to the way you run a practice. And if you in your heart know it's the right way for you, you're not going to go wrong. Find others of similar mindset, hang out with each other exchange ideas freely and openly, open up your vulnerabilities. It's amazing. It's amazing. And please shut me down if no, I'm wrong too much. Fine. This is stuff everybody needs to hear. Right. You know, find your, find your own way. I will, Be your own self and treat each other I, a little nicer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. I went into a conference once. Uh, I was invited to a conference and the attendees there were people who I looked up to Clinically, they buzz circles around me. I can't touch them. So I thought, some of the biggest names that I've read about are in this room. And here comes little old me. And I sit down and, and it's an interactive um, retreat type of workshop. And all of a sudden, these guys are saying things that I'm thinking. And, and at some point, I just kind of raised my hand and made a point. And somebody that I looked up to my whole career said, what Alan said made sense. Hey, 
But these are like-minded people. You're, you would be amazed if you hang out with people of similar mindset to you, how much you can learn, and more importantly, how much you can give, which gives you a greater sense of value also. Give, give, give. Share, share, share. So important. Very simple. Simple things yep. by Alan Stern. <laughs> That's it. You want yeah. another one? Get money out of your life. It's okay to dream of a lifestyle that's the envy of the world. But if you don't have the earnings to support it and some extra, step back and enjoy what you got and build on that. It's a very painful lesson that I learned. And I learned it the hard way. But I learned it, and I'm doing great. I can do whatever I want now, and I'm on track for the life that I have built and that I want to have. So don't, to the greatest degree possible, and it's not perfect, but they, they taught me at Panky. Yep. You can see my arms? Live here, earn here, and invest the rest. Smart. So simple, so stupid. <laughs> and so many of us don't do it. I missed it for about 10 or 15 years of my life. I missed it. And I'm, I'm fine. I made it up. Everything's fine. I adjusted my life and I'm content. But that stress is totally unnecessary. Right. Alan, no and tell us about, um, I know that somebody's attitude can be contagious and could affect the culture of your practice. So what was the culture of your practice like when you had all this stress versus when you let it go? And how did that affect the culture of your practice? <laughs> <laughs> you know, at stressful times, a patient cancellation would be the end of the world. Or uh, this may may only have happened to me. I don't know if, if uh, any other GPM clients um, have had this happen, but here's this one. They come in, they're scheduled for a three unit bridge and they come in and they say, hey doc, I only wanna do this filling down here. Did that all, does that only happen to me? <laughs> Again, you're the only one, nobody else. <laughs> only one. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> and, um, you know, some of the thoughts that go through your head when that happens, uh, we can't repeat <laughs> on family TV here. But it's the end of the world if, damn, I need to generate X per day or else I'm screwed. Now, you know, you know, Allison, we really scheduled a block of time for the bridge. What's stopping you? Can I help you get past it? And it, it's not this nervous, Allison, we got to do this, okay? Jeremy, you book three hours. I'm not going to be out of here unless we do this bridge. Or, or else. else. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Now it's, yeah, all right, um, we're going to get her through it, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get you to do what's right for you, but we're going to do it from the orientation of what's matter. And then you'll tell me, um, um, uh, we just had a major um, appliance breakdown or a pipe burst in my basement. Oh, geez. I understand. We can't go through this right now. Let's get you through this. We'll keep you in a holding pattern until then. Or maybe, maybe if you're really nice to me, I'll say, all right, let me prep this. I'll put you in a temporary because the teeth are really rotting out. I'll charge you for a temporary and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll figure out the rest next year. But let me do this for you. The world is not coming to an end. You get to lighten up and relax. Uh, that's one thing that happened. The other thing in the culture, um, we're a lot less tense. So when I say Monday morning doesn't suck, we come in smiling. And we come into our morning meeting and um, we read our mission statement together every morning. And we it's kind of a reality check on us. Are we living our mission? And we review the day, we joke around a little bit and we get everybody back and everything is, it's nice, it's fun. 
we enjoy each other. I'm sure your patients feel that too, you know, and that's, that's half the battle oh, in oh dentistry too, goodness. is making people feel comfortable, making mm-hmm. them feel cared for. And mm-hmm. like, let's, let's be honest that the dentist is not number one on people's to-do list. Sure. So the more comfortable you can make them, the less <laughs> hey, stressed you hey. can make them. <laughs> Listen, I am. I speak open and honestly. <laughs> <laughs> she's just speaking the truth of. No, um, I mean, what, oh, no, I was saying she's just speaking ahead, the please. truth of what we <laughs> help so many of our clients with, like yourself, is getting to the patients that dentistry is not their top priority. But how can we meet them halfway so that they are coming in every six months? They are making this a priority in their life and. And a dentist like yourself is the one that gets to provide that care to them. And it's, it really is. And, and this is what you guys do really well. It's connecting. It's connecting at whatever level you choose. We have, um, we have a framed sign um, right over our reception desk. And I got this from a plastic surgeon friend of mine. And um I don't know if anybody wants to use it, they're free to use it. It's on my website also, on my office website. Enter as strangers, leave as friends. And that's how we do it. And we're able now that, you know, we're, we're a very low to moderate overhead office. We run things very simple. We work within the parameters of our budget. So I know that when my assistant takes the person back, she is going to talk to them. She is going to take their blood pressure. And I am going to sit here and my tongue take, damn it, you know, I've got to get started. Come on, get the tooth dust spinning. I don't have to do that anymore. I know what's going on back there. A hygienist takes the first 15 minutes to sit down and just let that person talk. Uh, you know, steer them obviously toward teeth and health. But they're, they are so deeply connected to us. And Fran at our front desk, um, my wife, uh, we've learned this together. We've grown in it together. And she, she started out running a dental clinic at a local hospital. A completely different environment and ambiance. But we've learned this together. And um, she at her desk, she'll make follow-up calls. She'll make random care calls. And, you know, we learn this from folks like you. Uh, that connect, connect, connect. It's so important. It's so important. So when, 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 the, when, the, when you take the pressure off, it becomes so much more fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us and with all of all of our viewers. Like I told you on that, that first phone call, it's just, it's something that has to get out there and it's, um, it's a learning yeah. process, but that's where people like you come in and kind of help guide them into this conscious living, so, so to speak. Um, yeah. Let me, let me throw, may I throw in something yeah, a little sure. bit sobering on the whole subject? Um, back in 2013, I came in here and in the morning, on a very busy morning, and I do what all dentists do when getting and getting ready for work. I check my Facebook. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Very important start to the day. Um, yeah. And I saw a picture of a dentist, uh, a friend of mine out in, um, out in Kansas. Uh, she's a friend of Zanya's. Um, we both knew her very well. Wonderful, fabulous dentist. And her picture is up there uh, on a mutual friend's feed. RIP, my friend. 34 years old, Andrea was just the most remarkable, dynamic woman I had the joy of knowing. And she took her own life. And from that, uh, my good friend, Dr. Jim Otten out in Kansas City, we decided to put a program together at the Pankey Institute where Jim is on the board and Andrea was teaching. And we, t- we did a tribute to her life. And we also did a program on depression and suicide and dentistry. And what Dr. Otten and I learned is that we are number two behind police officers and soldiers at risk. For that. And 
it really, I don't know why, but it hit me very hard how we can be in such a fabulous profession and yet perceive it as we all do as a source of unbearable stress. And we need to understand a couple things. Number one, understand that we work in a terrific profession with an opportunity to make the world better in a way that very few can. And I don't care if you're practicing tier one um, charity care or tier four AACD, incredible stuff. We make the world better in a unique and remarkable but imperfect way. Number two, depression is an illness in this country. We are obsessed. Um, there's a great book called Late Bloomers, which I urge everybody to read. We are so obsessed with attaining the stupid synthetic benchmarks of being the next Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, or uh, Justin Bieber. <laughs> And if, if we or our children don't attain that at an early age, we perceive ourselves as being unworthy. And that, can, that, among many other things, can trigger depression. If you are depressed, get help. There's no shame in it. My, my dear friend Andrea, on the last day of her life, could have torn a person's mouth apart and put it back together as well as anybody or better than anybody in the country doesn't make you competent or incompetent, it makes you in need of help, just as if you broke your leg or came down with the flu. If you are depressed, talk to somebody. That's very important. So there's a flip side to this. This is a good profession. Get it through your head. Life's imperfect. Get over it. If you can't get over it, get help getting over it because you got a lot to give. You got to, a lot to live for, a lot of people who want you. So let's get out there and do some living. And it's so important. And if there are talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. And if um, any of the viewers want to get a hold of you so that they can learn more, work with you directly, how should they do that? Here's the thing. If anybody listening to this has something going on in the, in your practice or your life, I want to give you something. I want to give you a half hour of my time and sit down on the phone and we could talk about any issue, anything you want for a half hour. And, you know, maybe I could help you out. The worst thing that'll happen, you'll get to know me. <laughs> Ask my wife about that. She'll tell you. The best thing that could happen, I could, I could just tweak your perspective a little bit. And I do this. I, I do coaching. And I'm loving what I'm doing. I, I, I'm, I'm thriving on the chaos that is my life. But everything I'm doing is is just, I'm making the world a little bit better. So if I could help you, you can do one of two things. Give me a call. My office is 732-493-8030. You speak to Fran. She'll tell you all about me. She'll only tell you the good stuff. But good job, Fran. A little bit better. Yeah, she'll drop the dirt maybe at the second or third phone call. Or or just throw me, throw me an email, better, richer, stronger at gmail better richer stronger because that's what i've made myself and that's the name of my business better richer stronger you can look at my website also but if there's somebody out there with an issue and i could tweak your perspective a little bit let's go i would also encourage our viewers i recently did this after my very first conversation with alan is i went and liked the better richer stronger facebook page because he lives do. it. You Please see do. him doing Come over. workouts and wall sits and <laughs> it's motivating. And he just even see it come across your feed mm-hmm. just ignites a little something in there. So I would encourage all of our all of our viewers mm-hmm. to like that and follow that I, as well. I wish I had the opportunity to show a picture of what I looked like uh in 2011. I was 35 pounds heavier. My pants size was four inches bigger. Um uh, it was the, and I, I got myself in shape. I ran into the right mentors. I'm now a certified health coach, by the way, uh, because of that. Uh, ran into a nutritionist, ran into a chiropractor who owned a gym. And um, last week I held a plank for 10 minutes and 22 seconds. And I'm not shy to tell you that I turned 66 years old a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just getting started. 
So immaturity <laughs> works really well for me. I could tell you immaturity feel real well. Well, that's inspiring. That's Absolutely. inspiring for me. Ten I, minute blank. That's I would just shake. Yeah, just shaking. I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was, I was shaking like a bad transmission. Was it, I'm going, I'm going for twelve, and I'm gonna get it at an age when most people are slowing down, getting soft, and getting old. And right, right. Uh, you don't have to. You just don't have to. And life is so much fun when you're fifty. It really is. We really appreciate it, Alan. And I so. think the the one thing that you you ended a presentation that you shared with me is of enjoy the ride. And I think that that is all encompassing yeah. here. And what we're, what we're talking about is. That's the name of the book it? that's coming out at the end of the year from Indie Books. Yes, we're going to be doing that. That should be done by the end of the year. The manuscript's written. We're editing it now. And uh, we'll have it out there on the Better, Richer, Stronger website as soon as it's out. But uh, yeah, um, all my stuff, um, the first of what I okay. think are going to be many books on this subject. Um, enjoy the ride, whatever it is sure. you have. Matt, can I throw in one more? VST, V V V S T. Very, very, very simple thing. And I do this more often than not. I say 90, 90 to ninety-five percent of nights when I go to sleep, when you hit that pillow, think of a minimum of three things that you're grateful for and say it to yourself. Do it. Do it. You'll wake up the next morning a rich man, a rich woman. Three things you're grateful for every day. They could be the same things. They could be different things. I guarantee you that you have three things you're grateful for every single day of your life. Identify I think that's them a great isolate note them. for us to, to depart on is you know three, the, to be grateful um, and focus on the positives, um, even the small things every single day. And yeah. when that book comes out enjoy the ride we want the first two copies yeah signed please autographed yes <laughs> autographed absolutely <laughs> thank you and i am very grateful for the opportunity to get this message out it's so important and yes, yeah it was a happenstance phone call um i was um i was calling to speak to zanya about something mm -hmm. uh, something very birthday. light and off the cuff i think it was her birthday and, Yes, yes. I'm, I, I was uh, sending her a rather humorous message on her birthday. I, I don't think it's repeatable, uh, but uh, right. we got into this conversation, and yeah, it, and again, you never know what a kind absolutely. word will do for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Here we are. Absolutely. Here we are. Yeah. Alan, thank you so very much for for joining us today. I hope to see you in person and continue talking to you and following you and living your, your very simple tips. And I hope at least one, one person walks away with a, a little bit of a, of an attitude change because I know after my first conversation with you, it, it certainly helped me. So I'm hoping that it will have that same effect on at least one other person. I hope so. Perfect. If so, mission accomplished. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you.